Well, good morning and welcome to another assembly here at TD Christian. I am Mr. Dykeshorn and I am honored to introduce to you Miss Sunita, who is going to lead us in devotions today. Hi, everybody. So today I'm going to share with you um, a little excerpt from a book called Anxious for Nothing, written by Max Lucado, uh, because this world's felt a little chaotic lately. And it's definitely I've definitely been searching for calm. Um, you know, lately it's been really hard to just focus on God and pray with so many distractions and so much that we're juggling uh, with and dealing with um, that sometimes it's been it's been hard to remember to put on your blinders and remember your foundation and to start focusing on God. Um, as Christians, we have been taught that the Christian life is one of peace. However, in the midst of these circumstances, it can often feel impossible to find peace. And even when you're searching for peace and do find it, it can be hard to grasp onto it for too long. So this book reminded me to take time to be real about the emotions you're feeling, no matter what that may be, whether it's uh, fear, anxiety, stress, confusion, but to remember where your hope uh, comes from during these times of uncertainty, to focus on prayer instead of despair, to remember that as a child of God, we are important to God and can turn to him at any moment through prayer. So this excerpt comes from the chapter called Prayer, Not Despair, um, uh, written by Max Lucado. God doesn't delay. He never places you on hold or tells you to call again later. God loves the sound of your voice, always. He doesn't hide when you call. He hears your prayers. For that reason, be anxious for nothing, but everything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And that comes from Philippians 4 verse 6. With this verse, the apostle calls us to take action against anxiety. Until this point, he has been assuring us of God's character, his sovereignty, mercy, and peace presence. Now it is our turn to act on this behalf. We choose prayer over despair. And peace happens when people pray. God calls us to pray about everything. The terms prayer, supplication, and requests are similar but not identical. Prayer is a general devotion. The word includes worship and adoration. Supplication suggests humility. We are the supplicants in the sense that we make no demands. We simply offer humble requests. A request is exactly that, a specific petition. We tell God exactly what we want. We pray the particulars of our problems. What did Jesus say to the blind man? He says to us, what do you want me to do for you? One would think the answer would be obvious, considering he's a blind man. When a sightless man requests Jesus' help, isn't it apparent what he needs? Yet Jesus wanted to hear the man articulate his specific requests. God wants the same for, same from us. So for instance, um, the needy man in Jesus's parable requested, friend, lend me three loaves, not just give me something to eat, or can you help me out? He made a specific request in Luke uh, chapter 11, verse 5. And even Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane prayed specifically, take this cup from me. Why does this matter? There are three reasons. First, a specific prayer is a serious prayer. If I say to you, do you mind if I come by your house sometime, you may not take me seriously. But suppose I say, can I come over this Friday night? I have a problem at work and I really need your advice. I can be there at seven and I promise I will leave by eight. Then you know my petition is sincere. When we offer specific requests, God knows the same. Two, specific prayer is an opportunity for us to see God at work. When we see him respond in specific ways to specific requests, our faith grows. The book of Genesis relates to the wonderful prayer of Abraham's servant. He was sent to Mesopotamia, Abraham's homeland, to find a wife for Abraham's son. How does a servant select a wife for someone else? Well, the servant prayed about it. And here he goes. O oh Lord, God of my master Abraham, he prayed, please give me success today and show unfailing love to my master Abraham. See, I am standing here beside this spring and the young women of the town are coming out to draw water. This is my request. I will ask one of them, please give me a drink from your jug. If she says, yes, have a drink and I will water your camels too. Let her be the one you have selected as Isaac's wife. This is how I will know that you have shown unfailing love to my master. 
Could the servant have been more detailed? He asked for success in his endeavor. He envisioned an exact dialogue, and then he stepped out in faith. Scripture says, before he had finished speaking, Rebecca appeared, and she said the words, the servant had an answered prayer, and he saw God at work. And number three, specific prayer creates a lighter load. Many of our anxieties are threatening because they're ill-defined and vague. If we can distill the challenge into a phrase, we bring it down to size. It is one thing to pray, Lord, please bless my meeting tomorrow. It is another thing to pray, Lord, I have a conference with my supervisor at 2 o'clock p.m. tomorrow, and she intimidates me. Would you please grant me a spirit of peace so I can sleep well tonight? Grant me wisdom so that I can enter the meeting prepared. And would you soften her heart toward me and give her a generous spirit? Help us have a gracious conversation in which both of us benefit and your name is honored. There you go. You have reduced the problem into a prayer size challenge. So find a promise that fits your problem and build your prayer around it. These prayers of faith touch the heart of God and activate the angels of heaven. Miracles are then set into motion. Your answer may not come overnight, but it will come and you will overcome. Prayer is essential in this ongoing war warfare. Pray hard and long. Pray for your brothers and sisters, as it says in Ephesians verse, chapter 6, verse 18. The path to peace is ultimately paved with prayer. Less consternation, more supplication. Fewer anxious thoughts, more prayer-filled thoughts. As you pray, let the peace of God guard your heart and your mind. And in the end, you'll see God at work in your life. Well, thank you again, Miss Anita, for those devotions. We have an exciting contest announcement. Last week, we introduced to you the Mallard Duck and the eBlock class wanted uh, our school community to participate in a naming contest. And so uh, a whole bunch of names came in, some absolutely great honorable mentions uh, came in like Cheese and Quackers and uh, Quacky Chan and you know some other just fantastic names. But one name came out, and the eBlock did some amazing work in holding in elections uh, in their civics portion of the class, and there was some campaigning and some just some amazing things that were happening. And I am happy to announce that our school's Mallard Duck has been named Tina. Now, what is even cooler about the name Tina is that um, you know in Old Latin, Tina means follower of Christ. But in Old English, Tina actually means river. So just how beautiful the person who thought that uh, that name was, uh, just how beautiful that meaning is that not only is it river, uh, which you know means quite a bit to a duck, but also follower of Christ and how she chose to make her nest right here in our very own parking lot. So congratulations to Abby Grutenborg, who is the namer of our duck. Now, speaking of Tina, I am just excited to hear this year's, or sorry, this week's update from Mr. Freeman. So uh, without further ado, we're gonna take it on location to the wilds of Woodbridge with Mr. Freeman and Tina. We are back here in the wilds of Woodbridge where our mallard duck has been living over two and a half weeks sitting on her eggs. But unfortunately, the nest may have been abandoned. Uh, although it's not unusual for a mallard duck to at times, uh, leave the nest to go and get water, uh, perhaps some food. Uh, this appears like it might be a little bit longer than that. And then the other concern, of course, is that over here we can see where there's a disturbance, where it looks like some animal has gone and kicked up some of the dirt, uh, kind of in the direction of the nest. Hopefully the mallard duck has only been spooked uh, hopefully uh, it's as simple as she was able to fly away uh, when an off-leash dog or some predator uh, came by uh, and will quickly return to the nest. Uh, at this point, the eggs have been incubating for a while. You can see one of the eggs that's down in there. They will stay relatively insulated for a little bit with all the down feathers, uh, but if the duck does not return to the nest within the day, uh, all will be lost for this mallard duck family. We wish our friend the little mallard duck well and hope that she returns soon today. Well, I can honestly say I was not prepared for the roller coaster of emotions today. We just finished naming Tina and she appears to have left. 
Can anything else go wrong this year? Well, I think we need some happy news and some exciting news. And with that as an introduction, uh, we have some very exciting news. As you know, June is coming up, which means many things, but one of those is graduation. And one of the parts of graduation that happens is our valedictorian. So Mr. Groot is going to take it away from here, and he is going to announce this year's Frank Romp Award winner. Mr. Groot, you're up. It's almost time for graduation at TD Christian High School, which is why I have on this gown and this cap. So I have a question to ask of you. What do these five students have in common? Natalie, Jake, Rena, Ben, and Evan. Besides being part of the graduation class and being great people, they're also the five nominees for the Frank Romp Award. So what is the Frank Romp Award anyways? Well, it's presented to the student who has been chosen as the valedictorian by the graduating class because he or she has shown Christian maturity and character in dealing with others, has made positive contributions in the school's curricular and extracurricular activities, and has earned the respect of the class. Today, I'm going to announce that winner. Congratulations, first of all, to Natalie, Jake, Rena, Ben, and Evan for being on the ballot. And right now I'd like to announce that the winner this year is Natalie. We look forward to hearing your speech at graduation, Natalie, and wish all of you all the best as you prepare for graduation 2021. Well, that was an exciting announcement. And once again, congratulations, Natalie. All right, we're gonna shift gears a little bit for our weekly Relay for Life update, and oh man, am I excited for this update. So, uh, Relay team, take it away. Welcome to this week's Relay for Life update. We have some prize winners to announce, another teacher consequence to watch, and some huge news about our fundraising goals. The first thing we're gonna check out is this week's winner for our teacher consequences. This person slash team that won this week's spin is the Tomb Raiders. Let's see what their team decided to make one of our teachers do. Hi, I'm Alexia, I'm in grade 10, and I'm captain of Team Tumorators. For this week's teacher punishment, my team chose Mr. Coy. Make sure to keep fundraising for a chance to choose your team's teacher of choice next week. All right, well, as you just heard, Mr. Coy has been chosen for the next consequence, and uh, let's see what it is. Three, two, one. Ah! <laughs> Love to see Mr. Koi slimed. Stay tuned because next week we'll have a new teacher and a new consequence. If you win, you'll get the chance to choose. We want to announce that the bingo challenge that is currently happening is going to be extended until Monday. Check our Instagram page at TD Christian Relay for more details. But there's some huge prizes to be won, including drones. Also, we wanted to announce the winner of the Oakley sweater. Remember, if you signed up before the deadline of Wednesday, May 26, you were entered into the draw. The winner is Ava Cubenhoven. Congrats, we will get you your sweater as soon as possible. We also want to take this time to announce a new contest. We are currently at 73 participants. We want to get over 100, so here's the plan. If we get to 100 participants registered by Monday at noon, we will put everyone back into a draw for a brand new sweater courtesy of Hollander Landscaping and Mr. Dykstrom has agreed to bleach and dye his mustache a color. Details on the mustache dye will be posted on our Instagram if we reach our goal. So make sure you get your friends to sign up. Finally, last week we announced a new goal of $13,000. Well TD, we have blown that out of the water. As of this recording, we have raised over $17,500 as a team. So we want to announce one final goal. That one that we want to reach before the end of Relay Week in June. It's ambitious and it would be our highest total ever at TD Relay for Life. It's $25,000. If we reach this goal, Mr. Groot will do something epic with his hair. We promise it will be worth it. Well, thanks for watching, and as always, make sure you check the announcements and follow us on Instagram at TD Christian Relay for the most up-to-date information. Yes, it is true. If we can have 100 people signed up, I will do some beautiful work to my mustache. 
Okay, so we've got one more thing I want to announce, and that is that next Tuesday is going to be a jersey day. So bust out your favorite team's jersey. I highly recommend the Toronto Maple Leafs, but it can be any sport, any team that you love, even one that you've participated on as, a, uh, as an athlete. And then you are going to be able to share those pictures. It's always a highlight of our yearbook, and we want this year to be no different in that way. Okay, so details will come out next week, but I just wanted to put it out on your radar that next Tuesday is going to be a Jersey Day. All right, folks, that is the end of the assembly. It is time for one last day of school before a weekend, and I hope that you have a great day.